All right, so what's going on, y'all? 216, uh, it reads nodal displacements, right? Um, forces in each element and reactions using the direct stiffness method. I'll keep this intro short. Let's get started. All right, so before we get started, just by looking at this problem, you could see it's kind of, well, it is in equilibrium, obviously, but it's equal, symmetrical. So K1, K2, and K3, let me go ahead and label them. They're all equal in terms of stiffness. And then we have a nice 200 going to the right at this node, and then to the left, the same force, 200. So that means that nodes one and four, they're gonna have an equal force. It doesn't necessarily mean the force is gonna be zero. Um, it just means they're gonna be equal and opposite. So kind of just by looking at this problem, pretend your left hand is node two and your right hand is node three and you're trying to compress that spring um, with two springs on on the other side of your hands obviously right so this is going to move a little bit to the right and this one's going to move a little bit to the left um, so that means if you pull here um, i want to say you're going to get a force maybe going this way at node one and another one going this way at node four um, again, I could be wrong. This is just looking at it. Um, you got to make sense of the problem, but let's go ahead and just get started with the problem. So like always, um, for those that are new, right, this is the goal force is equal to KX. That is, or in this case, U. that's the formula for a spring in physics. So that means the vector of the force times the global stiffness matrix K is equal to the displacement vector. So let's go ahead. We have four nodes, right? One, two, three, four. So that means there's gonna be four forces. F2x, F3x, and F4x. Um, we're gonna set that equal to the global stiffness matrix, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. That's one, two, three, four. These are nodes. And then nodes one, two, three, and four. I like to give myself some room, but these are nodes and these are nodes. Um, we use that to identify the positions of the values of the matrix. And then finally the vector for displacement, U1, U2, U3, and U4. Okay, so for the first one is between nodes one and two, the first element, I mean, it's between nodes one and two. So that means you're gonna go nodes one, two, one and two. So it's gonna be a hundred, right? Because the value is a hundred, negative a hundred, negative a hundred and one hundred. For the next one, element two is between nodes two and three. So on your matrix is gonna be two, three, two, three and you're gonna add 100 to all those positions. So this becomes 200, right? 100 plus 100. This becomes negative 100, negative 100, and 100. Same thing for element three between nodes three and four. So three, four, three, four. We're gonna add 100 here, that becomes 200. This is negative 100, negative 100, and 100. Fill in the zeros, right? We're we didn't have anything and we could go ahead and start doing the boundary conditions. So U1, nodes one and four, they're never gonna move. So no matter how much force you put at the other nodes, these are fixed. So just like that, zero and zero, it's not gonna move. Okay, so nodes two is gonna move if you apply force. I mean, even if you just had a force here, nodes two and three are going to move. So these will be U2 and U3. Now let's go ahead and do the forces. We, we're looking for the force at one. Again, it's not necessarily zero just because these two are equal and opposite. That just means these two are equal and opposite. <laughs> um, so we don't know the force at one or at four, but we do know them at two and three. So it's positive 200, right? Because this is our positive X, like always. This is negative 200. So let me go ahead and do that. That is 
200, negative 200, and cool. So again, for those that haven't been watching the other videos, you know you're doing something right if you either know the force or the displacement at that node. One, two, three, or four. So in the first node, we don't know force, but we know displacement. Second and third node, we know the force, but we don't know displacement. And then the fourth node, again, we don't know the force, but we do know displacement. So that means we're on the right track. So step two, it's gonna be F1x, right? So it's F1x is equal to 100 times zero minus 100 times U2 um, plus zero times U3 plus zero times zero. So in that case, it's just negative 100 U2. Second one, 200 is equal to negative 100 times zero, 200 U2 minus 100 U3. Uh, times zero times zero, plus zero times zero, so that's zero. Next one, we got negative 200 is equal to negative 100 times U2 uh, plus 200 times U3. Let's go ahead and label these equations. One, two, three. Last one, though. F4x is equal to negative 100 times U3. So now check this out, uh, four. Yes, we have four equations, four unknowns, and if you have the graphing calculator and if you let's use it, the professor, cool, go ahead and do that. But if you don't, the trick is to ignore the equations where you don't know force. The goal first is to find the displacements. So in this case, we, we're gonna ignore equation one for now and equation four. Stick to two and three. We have two equations and two unknowns, U2 and U3, right? So normally uh, what you could do is multiply the top by two. And if you do that, so you're gonna have 400 is equal to, oh, this is not 4,000, this is not 2,000, it's two, um, 200, there we go. So if you multiply the top equation by two, I'll explain why two, but two, uh, this will become 400, this will become 400, and this will become negative 200. If you add these two equations, these go to zero. Negative 200 U3 plus 200 U3, that's just zero. And then you could solve for U2, um, and you'll get your answer that way. I don't like to do that. Um, it's easier in this case, but I'll do it the longer way just to, just because. But usually when you might have a three equations, three unknowns, and it becomes a little harder. So I like my process better, so let's go ahead and just do mine. Um, you should get the same answer, though. So what I like to do is solve for a variable in terms of the other variable and then plug that variable into the other equation. So let's go ahead and start with equation two and let's solve for U2, it looks easier. So actually U3, because then I'm gonna deal with a de uh, 0 0.5 if I divide by 200 over here. So I'd rather not, let's go ahead and do 100 U3, equation two is equal to 200 u2 minus 200 divided by 100 u3 is equal to 2 u2 minus 2. so we got that relationship now we're going to plug in this u3 into equation 3. so let's go ahead and do that it's negative 200 is equal to negative 100 u2 plus 200 times U3. U3 is two U2 minus two, okay? Let me move it up just in case you couldn't see. But keep it going, negative 200 is equal to negative 100 U2 plus 400 U2 minus 400. Do some math, move 400 over here, you get positive 200 is equal to positive 300 U2. So that means U2 is equal to 0 0.67, and it's in inches. Again, I forgot to mention, um, make sure before you start doing all this, make sure all your units line up. It's not kilopounds, it's not feet. If they, sometimes you'll get like pound over inch, and then, um, I mean, 
you'll have to convert sooner or later sometimes from feet to inches kilo pounds to pounds newtons to kilo newtons just be careful make sure all your units line up in this case this matrix is pound per inch this um displacement will be an inch and this is in pound and sometimes they give you a delta value and they'll give you like delta is equal to 0 0.5 feet so that's when you have to convert but in this case it's all straightforward we got u2 awesome plug in u2 here to get u3 so if you plug in u2 you get 0 0.67 times 2 that's 1.33 minus 2 that is negative 0 0.67 And again, that makes sense that they're equal, right? The problem is symmetrical. Again, your left hand and your right hand are pushing in. I got Cheeto fingers, but it's all good. Um, they're pushing in, so the displacement, you could imagine it's pretty equal. It, it should be equal. Um, now that we have U2 and U3, we could solve for F1 and we could solve for F4. So F1x will be negative 100 times 0 0.67 that is negative 67 pounds going to the right so that means it's positive 67 pounds going to the left okay so that's f1 and f4x is negative 100 times negative 0.67 that is positive 67 pounds going to the right again if you don't switch the signs yet they will always be going to the right then if it's negative just switch it okay so that's that right there in case you couldn't see um let's go ahead and do well let's verify them first so does this make sense the sum of the forces in the x direction they have to be equal to zero so we have 200 going to the right, 200 going to the left, they cancel out. At node one, we have 67 going to the left. And at F4, we have, uh, at node four, we have 67 going to the right. So yeah, they cancel out, that's cool. Let's go ahead and do the local element forces. So these are easy, um, right? If you've been watching the other videos, in this case, K1 is equal to K2 is equal to K3. And that K value is 100, negative 100, negative 100, and 100. Again, because they're all 100. If this was 500, this was 800, this would not be the case. But in this case, they're all equal, so it's gonna save us some time in that sense, but in terms of writing, but so let's go to step six. Let's do the first element. So this spring, or the element, is between nodes one and two. So you're gonna put F1x, F2x, one and two. That is equal to the K matrix, right? The one that we just wrote right here, times U1 and U2, because it's between nodes one and two. So. That value is 0 and 0 0.67. So 0 0.67 for node 2, 0. So that means F1x is equal to 100 times 0 minus 100 times 0 0.67. That is negative 67 pounds going to the right. For these, I don't like to switch the signs. Just keep them that way. You'll see why. When we verify them, it makes it easier. F2x, and this is for element 1. Element 1. F2x is the same, but just a sign switch, but right? Negative 100 times zero plus 100 times 0.67. That is positive 67 pounds going to the right. So that's the first one. Okay, next one, it is F2x and F3x. Why two and three? Because it is between nodes two and three, second element. So between nodes two and three, again, the value is the same, K, right? It's that matrix times, that is U2 and U3, because it's between nodes two and three. So 0 0.67, negative 0 0.67, and that's it. So F2X of element two 
is equal to 67 plus 67. So it's 100 times this plus negative 100 times negative 0.67. So that's how you get that. That is a positive 134 pounds going to the right. For F3x, same thing, just a sign switched. So it's negative 67 minus 67, negative 134 pounds to the right. Okay, so let's go ahead and box that. And finally, the other one is between notes three and four. So F3x, F4x is equal to K, and that is zero, negative 0 0.67, U3, right? And U4 is zero. <clears throat> okay, so we're here. F3x of element three is equal to negative 67 pounds. I'm assuming you know how to do it, right? 100 times po negative 0 0.67 plus negative 100 times zero. So negative 67 pounds to the right. F4x of element three is equal to positive 67 pounds to the right. So now let's go ahead and verify them. So you verify these by adding all the forces, the little forces in each node that should equal your big force. So let, I'll show you what I mean by that. <clears throat> all right. F1, in this case, we found it to be negative 67 pounds to the right. That means when you add all the little F1s here on all of them, you should get negative 67 to the right. So in this case, we have one right here, negative 67 to the right, cool. Not here, not here, not here, not here, not here. There's only one F1 and it equals negative 67 pounds to the right. That means F1 is verified. Now let's uh, F2. F2 is positive 200. That means when you add all the F2s, that should give you a positive 200 to the right. So we got an F2 right here, 67 pounds, and we have one right here for 134. Add them up, that's 200. So boom, it's verified. There's no more F2s. F3 is negative 200. There's only two F3s right here and right here. Negative 134, negative 67. Add them up, you get negative 200. Boom, verified for F3. And F4 is 67 to the right. So that means we only have one F4, 67 to the right, nothing else here verified. So that's how you do these problems. If you know how to do this one, um, you should be all right for the midterm. These are the crazier side of these problems. So 2.16, 2.15, and 2.13, I did them already. Um, if you know how to do those three, <clears throat> you will be fine. Don't even worry about it. Uh, good luck, and that's the answer for the top part right there, and then this is the bottom part.